My life on the C list. I've gotten a lot of stuff off Craigslist. Among them, the side tables in my bedroom, found under for sale, furniture. A full-size mattress, for sale, furniture. A sectional, also for sale, furniture. A bicycle, for sale, bikes. Four apartments, housing, apartments. Two dogs, community, pets. And now, ex-boyfriend, personals, strictly platonic. <laughs> But this story is from the gig section. For those unfamiliar with gigs, it's where you can find postings for informal jobs, help to move a large couch from a second story apartment, to mow your unruly lawn, to bartend topless at a private party. You know, typical odd jobs. I was living in Austin at the time, a recent transplant with a fancy graduate degree and no job. So among the 10 or so real job applications I would submit every day, I would also browse the gig section in hopes of finding an easy way to make some quick cash to supplement my $0 income. That hot August day I was scrolling past, are you a sexy model? And how trucks need, <laughs> tow trucks needed gigs when I, a post caught my eye, bridesmaids wanted. <laughs> the thing is, I love parties, attending them, throwing them, I love dancing, taking pictures, eating, and making toast. I love themes and little details that tie everything together. I love that parties bring people together. And what is the ultimate party? A wedding. Naturally, I love weddings. Bridesmaids wanted. I clicked the posting. It read, for, it read like a very matter-of-fact personal ad. In need of two bridesmaids for my wedding in March, must be available for one night of crafting one week before the wedding, <laughs> rehearsal dinner, an entire day of wedding. Must be reliable, fun, and willing to be in photographs. You will receive all meals, hair and makeup, bridesmaid's dress, and $100. <laughs> Must be female. <laughs> Serious inquiries only. Was I available for a wedding and wedding-related activities? I could make sure of it. Was I reliable, fun, and willing to be in photographs? Hell yes. Was I female? Last time I checked. And I would get fed, a new dress, hair and makeup, and paid. To this day, I haven't found a job posting that aligns so perfectly to everything I wanted. I replied to the posting immediately, exalting my prior experience as a bridesmaid, my craftiness at DIY projects, and how personable, responsible, and female I was. <laughs> it was only after I had clicked send on the reply that I called up my best friend Amanda to tell her about the ad and to ask if she would be willing to fill in the second desired bridesmaid slot. Amanda, being the awesome and equally curious friend I knew she was, agreed immediately to whatever came out of this. <laughs> a few hours later, I received a reply. The reply seemed normal enough. Her name was Sarah. She explained, explained in a friendly email that she was in her early 20s, had recently moved to Austin with her fiance, and was getting a PhD in mathematics. Being in the field that she was in, she found that she didn't really have any female friends, and her sister and her had just had a falling out over some family drama. This left her in a pinch when her fiance wanted to invite his two brothers to be his groomsmen, and she needed two bridesmaids to match. This all sounded extremely reasonable to me. Amanda and I agreed to meet her at a nearby coffee shop that weekend. When the morning of the meet, the meet up arrived, Amanda swung by my house to pick me up. We chattered excitedly on the way to the coffee shop, eventually revealing that both of us had individually told our respective boyfriends that if they didn't hear from us in an hour, then they should probably send help because we were probably kidnapped and sold into sex slavery. When we got to the coffee shop, we stood in line, scanning the room in anticipation for this mysterious bride-to-be. And after we grabbed a coffee and a pastry, we roamed around the coffee shop, trying to make eye contact with people who were sitting alone, often smiling at them in hopes that one of them would acknowledge that they were Sarah. But after doing two laps around the coffee shop with no luck, we sat down at a table in the back and dejectedly ate our muffins. I checked my email one more time just to make sure I hadn't missed a message from Sarah. And there was an email from her saying that she had been running a little late and was sitting at a table in the front room. Amanda and I grabbed our baked goods and walked over to where Sarah had said she was. There in the front room at a large round table sat Sarah. I wish I could say something absurd here, like that it turned out that she was a 50-year-old guy who wanted to sell us into sex slavery. 
But honestly, she looked kind of like a normal young lady in her 20s with short brown hair. We stayed and chatted with her for about an hour. She was rather quiet and reserved, but Amanda and I, being the ideal bridesmaid candidates that we were, kept the conversation going, asking her about her wedding, her fiance, and the details about the gig. The wedding was to be outside in a beautiful park in West Austin. There would be about 150 people in attendance. She had yet to pick, up, pick a caterer. I suggested this great little food truck that I was obsessed with. Her fiance was also a mathematics PhD student, also quiet. Neither of them wanted a big wedding, but his parents had insisted and put up the funds for it. At the end of the meeting, Sarah said she would be emailing us both bridesmaids contracts that outlined the details of the agreement, when we would have to show up for the events, that we would have to be friendly and fun, and what we would be getting in return for our services. Where would she even find such a template for this contract, I wondered. But I agreed to her terms. We said our goodbyes, and that we would see each other again soon. I'm pretty sure Amanda and I high-fived in the parking lot at what a stellar job we did convincing her that we were the right females for the gig. Alas, about a week later, I received an email from Sarah. Instead of sending the promised contract, she kindly thanked us for our time and willingness to be bridesmaids. But due to the increasing pressure of the wedding, she and her fiance had decided to elope instead. I sent a quick thanks and good luck email reply, even though I felt neither thankful or wishing of good luck. <laughs> I mean, it had been the perfect opportunity. And now that some time had passed, I suppose it's the best and they did what was best for them, even if it meant dashing the hopes of two eager bridesmaids for hire. In the end, I never heard from Sarah again. Amanda and I continued to have ridiculous adventures. And soon after, I found an actual full-time job not off Craigslist, and stop looking as regularly for gigs. But if anyone out there needs a bridesmaid, you know where to find me. <laughs>